Hey guys, welcome to another episode of NetSec Now. Uh, today what we're going to be learning is how to actually set up one of the last key pieces of the software we need to, to do auditing. Most of the stuff that's in Kali Linux is you know, script based, it doesn't really need too much configuring. Um, some of the more popular software they're going to be using like Metasploit, um, you know, we're going to be setting up today. Uh, we've already went through the previous videos of setting up OpenVos, so that's good. That's one of the things that we're going to use in tandem with Metasploit. Um, so without further ado, let's get over to our fancy disclaimer. Um, any information disclosed in this series is provided for the sole purpose of learning network security. We take no responsibility for any misuse of any information we provide. We only suggest you audit systems that you have permission on and or audit systems only in your lab. In short, please don't be an idiot. Moving along. Today's objective, as we mentioned, is Metasploit. Um, we're going to go through finding out what Metasploit is. Uh, we're going to figure out why do we use it, what tools are used with it, and how to get started in configuring it. So what is Metasploit? Well, Metasploit was created back in, oh, I want to say 2003. Uh, and what it was really made for was for exploit developers. You see, just to give you a brief history, it used to be way, way, way back in the day, prior to Metasploit days, that uh, people who wrote exploits that found vulnerabilities in software, services, systems, things like that, uh, used to write them in whatever language they could write them in, usually with C or Perl or, you know, something to that effect. Uh, and then it used to be that you'd have to go out to the different security feeds, find the version of software, see if there's a vulnerability, um, download and trust, quote unquote, and I say trust lightly, um, the developer of the actual exploit code itself. You had to download that, you had to compile it, and you had to make sure uh, you ran it against the target. Now, the downside to that was, besides doing all the manual work of going out and finding it, was you had to kind of have an open level of trust with the person that uh, you know wrote the exploit. For instance, if it was in C code and you had to compile it, uh, and it was like, let's say, an exploit for remote co uh, code execution or uh, a reverse shell or something like that, uh, you had to also trust that they didn't put a reverse shell into your system in that code. So you had to know something about the C language and you had to try to go through it and read it uh, to make sure that that wasn't the case. Unfortunately, you know, as we mentioned in other videos, there's a lot of people out there who, you know, I mean, let's face it, we're, we're all hackers, so, you know, it's hard to trust somebody that you don't know, you can't see, you haven't known, and you're just downloading their code, right? Uh, and we showed you that in the uh, video for the OpenVos 6 quick start script that uh, I wrote. Uh, how to check the code, look at it, and so on and so forth. But anyway, getting back to what Metasploit is. Uh, Metasploit was created as a framework for exploit uh, or vulnerability developers to write code easily um, and be uniformed uh, against a framework, an underlying framework where, you know, they could upload their code and then people can fire them at will. Um, it shortly thereafter came into the market uh, for pen testers, you know, so instead of us going out on the web and trying to find some random code for software that we might think is vulnerable, we could actually use Metasploit to scan that target system and then try to pull from the database of known vulnerabilities and fire them off. Now, there was still an issue with that. I mean, you still had to know a bunch of commands and remember a bunch of commands uh, because it was console-based only at that time. Um, there were some, you know, front ends developed for it over time, and, you know, some of them were messy in its infant uh, stage, but um, there's one in particular that we're going to be using. Um, it's called Armitage, and we'll get into that in later slides. So Metasploit, basically, what we use it now, fast forward till today's time, we use it for now is almost a one-stop shop for um, exploits, uh, scanning systems, firing exploits at systems, and using it to, you know, uh, shoot off payloads at the systems, things like that. Now, the, the front end for it, Armitage, which we're going to be talking about in, in just a minute, is, is really good and it really kind of helps you out. You don't have to use the command line. However, you still have the option to use command line if you are so inclined. 
Um, I'm rusty with the command line, I'll be honest. It's been so many years since I used the command line, but uh, nonetheless, uh, we'll, we'll shoot through that a little bit as well. Um, so again, you know, why do we use Metasploit? Well, uh, we just said it. I mean, you know, using Metasploit is just really easier to fire stuff at your target uh, to try to gain access and to see if it's successful or not. Um, what tools are used with it? Well, the beautiful thing is that Nmap is you know, a port scanner, obviously, and a service scanner, a service fingerprinter. You know, it's your one-stop shop for all things service discovery-wise. Um, Met, uh, Metasploit uses uh, Nmap uh, with it to do scans for ports and services that runs on uh, run on those ports. Uh, in order to try to match you with a vulnerability that may be for that type of port or that port number or maybe for that port and service that subsequently runs on that port or a combination of all. Um, so basically uh, Armitage we're also going to be using with it like we explained uh, only because it's a graphical front end it kind of makes it a little bit easier to you know, visualize what you're actually doing instead of trying to visualize it in your head and remember that, plus all the commands, plus, you know, it just gets to be a nightmare. So, um, Armitage definitely helps us do that. Uh, so, we're going to be getting started with that. Um, we're going to, well, I'm going to show you how to, you know, set it up. Um, unfortunately, like I've mentioned in other videos, uh, and I was wrong in some aspects, and I'll explain why, but um, Metasploit has went the way of many other um, projects that started out as free open source. They now have a community edition, which is the Metasploit-like framework, and their community edition gives you kind of a clunky web-based GUI, which I don't really like, to be honest with you guys. Um, that's why I use Armitage uh, to, to work with the Metasploit framework. Um, and then they have the pro version and the enterprise version, which costs exorbitant amounts of money. Uh, I think the it's either the pro version or the enterprise version. I don't know. You can look on Rapid 7s website. Uh, it's like five thousand dollars a year per user. I mean, that's a little insane, don't you think? Um, sure, they give you you know better GUI tools and better scanning techniques and abilities and stuff like that, but. You know, honestly, guys, we can we can do this just as well with uh, command line, and we can do it just as well with command line and Armitage, or just Armitage alone. So let's move on to the next slide here. So the initial setup um, in Kali Linux, and I'm going to show you uh, here in just a minute once we end the slides. Um, in Kali Linux, there is in the menu a option to start up Metasploit. Um, then you're going to want to configure the Metasploit framework license. Now this is the community license. Unfortunately, as I made a post on our blog this morning uh, when I got into the office, um, unfortunately there's no way for me to roll back what I've already done uh, in terms of setting that up for myself. Um, and I really don't feel like installing another VM. I've been, I've been in VM hell for days now, as I'm sure if you've been following the blog and Facebook, uh, you can see. Um, so we're not going to do that just to set up the Metasploit license. What I what I did do is grab some screen grabs, and um, I grabbed them right from Rapid7's uh, uh, wiki site, and uh, I'm going to include those, and I'm going to explain each step through, you know, the actual images themselves. Um, so then once we get our license, we're going to want to issue, um, you know, the MSF update command to actually update uh, to the newest, latest, and greatest database of vulnerabilities and, you know, payloads and exploits and all that good stuff. Um, then we're going to learn a little bit about what Armitage is. I know I explained it just a little bit before, but, I mean, we're going to poke around at the, uh, the GUI uh, of Armitage. We're going to take a look. We're not going to do any scans just yet. I'm um, just going to show you, you know, different options in the menus and stuff like that, and just the basic general overview and layout of it. Um, and then, you know, in our next video, which I'm hoping to produce today, uh, since I've been, you know, hitting a lot of roadblocks with it uh, the last couple of days, and guys, I want to make it perfect for you, so that's why I'm taking my, uh, my time on it. I want it to be absolutely perfect. In fact, yesterday, if you were following the blog, uh, you noticed that... Uh, I made a post from my my phone actually. Um, I was in the middle of making this 
you know, really long, intense video on actually starting to scan, you know, with uh, Armitage and, you know, exploiting our VMs on our, on our uh, lab network. And uh, the phone rings loud as hell. And uh, it's a client saying that, uh, you know, there was an incident that happened at their location and they need me to come in and do an incident response quickly. So naturally, as a self-employed pen tester, I was called out uh, and away to take care of that client. But I do want to say one more thing. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to Raphael Mudge. Uh, he is the creator of Armitage. He is also the creator of, uh, was it Cobalt Scanner, I believe, which is um, a meteor, more in-depth um, version of Armitage, I guess you could say. I mean, I, I've looked at some of his videos based on its usages and, you know, he, he has like a little training series that he does and stuff like that uh, for free on his website. And I'll put all the links for all the websites as always in the description. Um, so I reached out to him via email and yeah, he does respond to all emails, guys. So, uh, you know, try not to inundate him with him, but uh, he will respond to your questions if you are so inclined. Uh, I reached out to him via email the other day and uh, you know he's been doing a lot of amazing things uh, his cobalt strike software is it, it's kind of a, a mix between Armitage well the way I've seen it anyway and I, and I could be completely off base I mean hopefully maybe he can explain it to you better on his website but from from what I've seen and watched the majority of the videos it's a toss-up and a mix-up between um, Armitage and like what's included in Kali Linux ready SE toolkit um, yeah it's graphical um, yeah it's probably much easier to use than firing off you know Metasploit and uh, Armitage and then SE toolkit and stuff like that um, but you know really I mean honestly guys it's completely up to you uh, I must say that Cobol Strike is a paid version of software however it is cheap and it is worth it I think and don't quote me on this but I think on his website it's somewhere around fifteen hundred dollars a year for a license which is much much cheaper than Metasploit's craziness. Um, it still uses a Metasploit framework uh, to fire off, you know, stuff like that. And then, it, and of course, I think it also. Um, I don't know if he wrote it himself or he's kind of using the SE toolkit inside of it. I, I really haven't asked him, so I don't know. But big shout out to Raphael, um, and I'll put his links for his YouTube channels. Uh, as well as his two websites for Armitage and for Cobalt Strike here in the description as well. Okay guys, so the next thing you're going to want to do is log into your Kali Linux system as root. Um, once you're in there, we have to start some services. Now, Kali Linux made this pretty easy for us. All we got to do is click one thing from the submenu. So go up to the Applications menu up top here. Go to the submenu of Kali Linux and then scroll all the way down here to the bottom where it says system services. Now in here you can start your SSH server if you wanted to have SSH connections. Uh, you could start the HTTP web server. Uh, you could start MySQL, but what we're looking for here is Metasploit. Now if you hover over that, obviously, you can see now there's another sub-menu of Community Pro Start, Community Pro Stop. So let's click on Community Pro Start. Now you have to do this every time you're going to run uh, Metasploit and you have to do this the first time out obviously to you know navigate to the web address and register uh, you know for your free key for the community version so once that's all done here you can see that it starts the Postgres uh, database and then it starts Metasploit RPC server and the web server uh, after that open up your browser whether it be Firefox you know whatever um, we're using Iceweasel obviously here. So just type in the address and I'll put uh, this, this is going to be in a pictures too. Oops. Uh, HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash. Now you can see I already have it in here. The port is 3790. So it's HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash localhost or 127.0.0.1 colon 3790. Now it may take some time to actually be able to connect to the web service. As you can see here, it says unable to connect. Now, most people freak out and they say, oh my God, well, you know, wh what's going on here? Um, the reality of it is, is it takes a little while for the database to get started and performing correctly. It takes a little while for the uh, web server that this is based off of to get started and, and working correctly and accepting connections. So I would say give it 30 seconds to a minute um, and try to reload the page, you know, 
don't keep hitting reload or try again uh, or refreshing it you know every second um, give it a few seconds and try it again and then give it a few more seconds and try it again so um, as you can see here we'll, we're doing it again and then it says connecting 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 and it's not connecting um, so give it a little while and then you'll be able to connect to it um, I'm going to pause the video here and I'm actually going to put in the images so you guys can see what it's supposed to look like. And you can see, okay, so it finally went through. Um, this is where you would log into the web interface for the community version, which, again, we're not going to be using in any of these demonstrations here um, because we're going to be using Armitage as the desktop based GUI front end. So once you log in here, uh, once you'd, you'd enter in the address here, you're not going to be presented with this login screen the first time out. You're going to be center, presented with um, a, a security exception for the certificate, again, because it's a self-signed certificate. Um, and I'm, I'm going to show you that here in just a moment uh, via the, the screen captures that I took uh, from the website. And um, I'll, get the, I'll get that going for you here right now. Okay, guys. So once you've logged in or once you've popped in that uh, address in your browser um, you know again like I said I've already done it so I can't show you live but uh, I'm gonna I've already browsed out to rapid sevens community website um, and so we're just gonna quickly go through this and I'll enlarge the images so you can see what you're up against so anyway the first time like you uh, like I said once you pop in that web address uh, you're gonna be presented with the security certificate is not trusted just click on proceed anyway and then go forward and you know add the exception like we did with uh, OpenVos, right? Um, so according to that here, um, it says then you're gonna have to generate yourself a new local user. Now this will be the user if you wanted to use the web interface to log in with. This is the username that you'd use and the password you use. So in this screen here, obviously you can use see they use some funny names like fake pants and stuff like that. Um, don't put in your real information here under uh, any circumstances, you know, just then when they ask you for your first name, so on and so forth, just put in your first initial, last name, last initial, whatever, you know, uh, use a real email address though, guys, but don't use your like corporate email, you know, use a Gmail address or something. Um, so anyway, basically going forward, you enter in, put in some, uh, a username that you want to create and a good secure password, uh, and then you can pull it, put in, you know, some fake stuff here obviously alright so then moving forward the next screen you're going to be presented with is you're going to be dropped back down into this screen here it's the activation screen so wait about I don't know sometimes it takes a minute sometimes it takes a few minutes uh, to check your email address uh, for the serial key now copy that and paste it under, under enter product key you've received by email if you didn't get a key or something like that you're gonna to have to click get product key again and fill out information so then once you do that you hit activate license okay the next screen you're gonna be dropped into here is choose your option well you don't want the pro because that is going to cost you a lot of money you want the free version here the community version so it says get community version you know I don't think that you're gonna have to go ahead and download any of that but once you click on that it's gonna drop you into this screen here now obviously um, you know you enter in your username all that good stuff uh, they want your first name so on and so forth um, obviously put in just bogus information here guys you don't really need to put anything real in there uh, besides an email address if they ever ask you for that um, so obviously here you can see whoops it says uh, email um, then once you get the activation key uh, setting your email address you're gonna add it here okay um, yeah just making sure that we're at the right scope here um, so then after that you know once you enter in your key it's gonna log in automatically it's gonna say activation successful you don't need to use this web interface like I said forget about the web interface then the next thing we're gonna do is actually MS of uh, MSF update for stands for Metasploit framework update and then you'll see something similar to this downloading some updates for you okay so let's get back into our Kali Linux machine and let's actually get started with 
poking around. Okay, so you can see that you already registered, you got your, you know, community version key and so on and so forth. So the first thing that you're probably going to want to do is uh, enter an MSF update. And that's going to go ahead and update to the current thing, uh, current uh, versions of all the vulnerabilities and stuff like that. Obviously, you can see I'm up to date. I just did it last night again. Um, but if you weren't up to date, like we just saw in that screenshot tutorial, um, basically, you know, it's going to go ahead and pop you with some updates. Um, so what we want to do next is we want to start Armitage. And I want to give you guys a, a look and a go around of what Armitage actually looks like. Very easy to do in Kali Linux. All you got to do is type in the command Armitage. And it's going to take a minute here and it's going to open up the web UI. I mean, not web UI, I'm sorry. Um, it's going to open up this connect dialog box here uh, on the desktop. And leave all this information the same because there's no way you can actually change this. Click connect. And then it's going to say Metasploit RPC server is not running or not accepting connections yet. Would you like to start the Metasploit's RPC server for you? Just click yes. And you can see on the screen here it's starting it up. Now it says connecting, 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 and then it says connection refused. Don't worry about that. Much like the web interface, it's going to take some time to establish, it, establish the connection to the database. And once it does that, uh, it usually takes about 30 seconds to a minute you'll be presented with the Armitage um, login or the Armitage web UI, uh, GUI. I'm sorry, I keep calling it a web UI. Um, so you're going to be presented with that here in just a second. You can see it says connected to database. Now it fires up Armitage. I might have to clear out some stuff in here. Just uh, give me a moment. Um, this is not the view that you're going to be presented with by default. Let me change that back here. Uh, let's see in here. I want to clear my database and then I want to go to um, okay I want to set it to graph view now graph view versus the view that I had it on um, the view that I had it on here and sets uh, table view will actually list like one by one by one by one all the machines and stuff like that Okay, graph view is actually going to list things in this area here. Whenever you pop in a host and scan it, it's going to list it in here. It's going to show up as a little monitor once it finds it, right? And we'll get into that when we actually start doing the exploitation process. Um, so just to poke around the menu a little bit here, uh, you can go to hosts. You can import hosts if you wanted to. Um, you can do the the first thing that you're going to wind up doing here is the nmap scan and like I said earlier nmap's included in the Metasploit framework as well as into the Armitage uh, front end so you can do different types of scans here intense scan, intense scan UDP, intense scan all TCP so on and so forth you do quick scan OS detects nine out of ten times what you're going to be using is intense scan all TCP or intense scan plus UDP because it includes all of these other scans in there. Um, there's one that's called MSF scans. You know, you could use that too. It's kind of the same idea. It's just its own little, you know, tailored scan. Uh, you can do DNS enumerations. Um, you can do attacks, and we'll get into that once we start scanning actual workstations. Uh, and then the Hail Mary attack, and we'll get into that in the next uh, video, but the Hail Mary attack is kind of like I don't know if you're familiar with football, Hail Mary is just a throw into Never Never Land and hoping for somebody to catch the ball. Same idea here is you just fire every exploit in the database out at these targets and hope one of them hits. Um, not a good idea because a lot of the more advanced firewalls or more popular firewalls um, pick that up kind of almost like a port scan and they may block you kind of like I do to people when they try to scan my networks. Okay, so workspaces, um, this is your workspace in here. Now you can uh, manage your workspaces, okay, and they would be in here if you created a new one, you'd have to add a new workspace, you can name it, uh, you know, whatever. If you're doing multiple scans on two different, you know, clients at the same time, which I don't know why you would, you want to just kind of focus on one thing at a time, but um, you could do that in here, okay. Uh, if you notice on any dialog boxes that pop up here, there's no exit, minimize, 
maximize, whatever. If you right click on it, you can actually get that menu. So just hit close. Now in speaking with um, Raphael the other day, um, there's going to be a new version of Armitage released here soon. He didn't give me a specified date, um, but uh, he told me that there's going to be a new version that's going to fix some issues that I actually emailed him about uh, the other day uh, in terms of you know lists being too long and not being able to see it enough, so on and so forth. But he's releasing a new version of this here soon. So uh, I will keep you posted on that. When the new version comes out, I will make a video on showing you how to update and upgrade it and all that good stuff. Um, so poking around here now, this menu here is like is like your regular menu that you would have now the if you were using console. The beautiful thing about Armitage is not only does it give you a graphical front end here and in here, but you can also issue commands in the console below if you wanted to as well. If let's say for instance you were having trouble uh, or you thought that the you know the GUI is not reporting correctly. You can also issue commands in here, and that's a beautiful thing. Now we just type the help command, and obviously, um, you know, you can scroll through here, and this is all the commands that you have available to you, like set if you want to set uh, a variable to a value, so on and so forth. Now, I'm not going to really go too much into using the the command line interface because a lot of a lot of you guys are beginner beginners and you know the uh, GUI is just much better I mean I even use the GUI guys don't get me wrong I mean why type things out when I don't really have to right time is money um, so anyway going back up here to the menu let's say for instance and we're, and we're really gonna do some real-world exercises here in our lab um, but, but let's go ahead and say that you had a host up here and you scanned it you weren't really sure what's going on um, you know, you want to look for a specific exploit, something like that. Uh, you know, let's say you had a Windows machine come up. Um, so you go to exploit, uh, expand that menu, click on Windows, and then let's say we wanted to do, I don't know, let's go to a browser. That's a pretty, pretty good one. Um, you can always move this over too, as well with your mouse, uh, to see the full description here. So if you want to do like uh, this exploit here, um, if you wanted to see what the exploit's actually about, all you have to do is double left click on it, and in just a moment it pops up a dialog box here. Now, not only is it going to give you a description, which you can read in here, this module exploits a vulnerability found in Adobe Flash Player, so on and so forth, and you can scroll down obviously here, it tells you the versions, the advisory, and stuff like that but you have values that you can change now it used to be when you just used uh, MSF console um, you would have to set these you know manually like using the set command set R host set L host set L port so on and so forth it's all done for you in here so the beautiful thing about that is is when there's actually a system in here you can actually right click on it and, and it will automatically fill in most of this information for you you also have here um, targets and it can give you automatic so it's automatically based on the port and server is going to try to find the correct um, exploit for the correct target it's going to try to do matching for you or you can manually select it here if you think that the nmap OS detection you know lied to you for some reason which you know is usually pretty accurate um, and you know in fact that you know it's a it's a Windows Vista machine or a Windows 7 service pack 1 but somehow it got reported as Windows XP service pack 3 uh, you can actually choose that in this menu here if you wanted to 9 out of 10 times it's pretty safe to leave it on automatic the other option here is you have show advanced options and when you click on that you can notice that there's a lot of more a lot more options that come up inside of the uh, menu here so you can do, you know, uh, you can set certain values, you can set your URI path, uh, the workspace that you want this to appear in. Again, we went through setting up different workspaces briefly. briefly. Um, you can set up, you know, JavaScript escape. I mean, there's a bunch of different things you can set up in here. But again, if, you know, you're like, hey, uh, that, that exploit's not going to work for me, obviously right click on it, go to close and that's fine. So if you wanted to search for a specific exploit that uh, you know you don't want to dig through all these menus and you're 
kind of in a hurry here or whatever, or you just want to find a specific one. Let, let's say, for instance, the MS-08 uh, exploit vulnerability for Windows XP was uh, pretty popular to get a reverse shell. Um, so let's say I wanted to, you know, I had advanced knowledge of the system was a Windows XP box. Uh, I know MS-08 uh, would probably work. So you could type in the exploit here, MS-08, and you see it's going to expand every single menu or every single menu in this tree um, of where an MS-08 exploit exists. So you can see auxiliary, admin, MS, MS-0859, and again, if you wanted to look at what this one actually was, you could just double left click on it, and it should open up. Sometimes you have to do it twice because it's, it's written in Java, it's kind of slow. Okay, so there you go. Um, this module exploits a command injection vulnerability in Microsoft Host Integration Server 2006. Well, do we really know? We don't know what our target machine is anyway, but you can put in our host here, which it should automatically be populated if you had a system highlighted in the graphical menu up here where all your machines are listed. Uh, and then you would just, you could click show advanced options, uh, or you can just leave it and click launch. That's if you wanted to launch the exploit against that target machine, right? So we, we know that we don't really have any machines, so we're just going to close this out. Uh, but let's say MS-08067, uh, that was the very popular one for Windows XP. Uh, you can click on here, just double click it again, and you can see this module exploits a parsing flaw in the path uh, code of net API 32.dll. Well, this really just gives you a reverse shell. I mean, you can sit here and read all this if you wanted to. Uh, automatic targeting, or you can go down. So apparently it works on Windows 2000 Universal, Windows XP Service Pack 0, Service Pack 1, um, Service Pack 2, Service Pack 3, uh, Windows 2003 Server, Service Pack 1, 2, 3. I mean, like I said, guys, you can scroll down this list here and see what it's all based upon. Now, obviously, you couldn't fire this on a Vista machine or a Windows 7 machine. It just wouldn't work. But if you weren't sure exactly what service pack they were running or whatever, you can hit automatic, and like I said, it'll it'll automatically go through and try to launch it, uh, launch it against the machine. Now you also have an option here on some of these to use a reverse connection, and really what that does, and by default on some of them they're checked, but that'll bypass the firewall restrictions if they're restricting you know uh, ingress uh, ports, uh, you know in their router. So that client system now makes a reverse connection to you, right? So um, let's just go ahead and close that one out. Um, but again, you can always search in there. Um, the other beautiful thing too, and I'll show you that when we start scanning hosts in the next video, um, is that you can also search for exploits. Uh, there's another search box that's going to pop up that you can search for stuff down here too. So you know, it's pretty good. Um, like I said, it's a pretty easy to use, very intuitive interface. Um, you know, sometimes you may notice it, it is a little laggy and a little slow when you click on things because I believe it's written in Java, and um, Java has been known to be kind of slow at times. But uh, overall, I'm impressed with Armitage. I mean, I know I remember using it years ago. I believe it was created in 2006, but don't quote me on that. I do remember using it years ago, uh, testing it on a Windows machine. Um, and it was awesome back then, and it's only gotten better, guys, right? He's condensed a lot of the menus here. There used to be, like, under attacks, find attacks by port, find attacks by service, find attack. He's he, he's narrowed it all down for you, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Um, but again, you can go into, uh, you know, view credentials, if you had any credentials sh saved in here. Um, if you want to close out any of these tabs, if you start getting a million tabs, just click the X on the tab here, and that's what we'll do to close out all that. Um, let's see, what else did could we show you? Uh, let's just, we can clear out our search here so it brings everything back up. Now you have payloads in here, which if you went down to like, say, Windows, um, and you wanted to find Interpreter, I believe you could type it in here. Yeah, there you go. So now you can find all the interpreter payloads if you wanted to fire one off at a machine. So let's say uh, Java-based interpreter. Um, there's even a Linux-based interpreter right now, which is pretty cool for even IPv6. Uh, there's a PHP interpreter. The Windows interpreter is probably the more popular ones you're going to be using. Um, 
a path enumerator. I mean, like I said, I got this 64-bit version of interpreters. Um, uh, Multi-interpreter inject. And if you wanted to see what that one was, you just, like I said, double left-click on it. And then you can read all about it. You can change values and launch it at the host. See, now this one doesn't have, um, because you manually selected it, it doesn't have, you know, any kind of... Uh, other options here to allow re reverse connection and stuff like that it, it does it automatically for you so like I said guys that's uh, that's pretty much it it's gonna do it for this video overview of Armitage getting it set up and stuff like that you don't have to use the Metasploit um, you know community version web UI front-end deal like I said it's kinda clunky um, you know maybe I'll even show you what it looks like just quickly just just so you can see I mean, it's it's completely up to you. Use whatever you're comfortable with. But um, let me show you what that looks like if I can remember my login. Uh, let's see. And we go down to 3790. And then I believe it was... Let's see. Hey, how about that? I actually remembered a password today. Um... So this is the web UI, guys. Like I said, uh, you know, you can go under administration here. You can look for software updates, um, software licenses, you know, do settings and stuff like that. I mean, honestly, you'd probably just use app for that and MSF uh, update, MSF update to update your phone database. Um, you know, you can obviously click on check updates. There's no updates. I have the current one here, which was released uh, or last updated on 529 and it's version one so you can see that you have the community version you copy down uh, and change your key if you want to put in a pro key um, I guess every year you're going to have to um, you know renew that um, but that, I mean that's really it for you know the web UI I mean it's nothing fancy it's nothing crazy um, so I'll just close that out like I said Armitage to me is much better um, so the next video we're gonna go into, and I've I was working on the slideshow yesterday, and I was where I was halfway into making the video, and then like I said, I got that crazy phone call that I had to run out for an incident response ASAP. Uh, so the next video um, we're gonna be going through the the phases of auditing or penetration testing. Um, I'm going to talk about different types of attacks. Uh, we're going to talk about Let's see. I mean, there's a ton of stuff in the slide, guys. I can't remember it all right now, but uh, you know, we're going to talk about uh, actually scanning hosts. We're going to do some scans on the virtual machines that we have here in the lab. Um, we're going to fire some exploits using Metasploit and Armitage. Uh, we're going to scan them with OpenVos to you know confirm vulnerabilities against it, which I always recommend you scan for vulnerabilities first, and then use something like Armitage to you know confirm that and go ahead and fire them. Um, We'll touch on Nmap. We'll touch on uh, case file. We'll touch on you know uh, building documentation. Um, you know about your results. We're going to go through reconnaissance. Uh, we're going to go through you know post exploitation. What can you do once you've hacked the box? Uh, you know we're going to do a bunch of different things, right? So it's going to be a really long, intense video. So you may want to watch that at your own leisure. Uh, you know, when you have at least an hour to dedicate to it, um, it's probably going to go more. I may even have to split it up into multiple parts. I don't know, guys. It's it's a lot of stuff to cover. Um, but, uh, you know, again, once we're done with that tutorial, there's still some more stuff to learn. Um, you know, then we'll go into a different series. We're going to do like, uh, you know, network security from the defensive side. How do you secure your network? Um, you know, if you're going to be a security manager for, you know, your clients, how do you prevent this stuff from happening again? Um, you know, we're going to talk about a lot of stuff, guys. So stay tuned for the next video. I'm going to try to knock that one or at least some of it out today. Uh, I wanted to make this video because this is the last piece of software that you actually need to configure and set up to use. Everything else that we're going to use, like um, ZenMap, for instance, and I'll just show you that here quickly. Um, you can always type it in from a command line too, guys, if you like can't deal with just, you know, looking through the menu and trying to find it. Um, you can always type it in what you want to look for. Zen map. See, I get stressed out a little bit and I'm like, man, I really don't want to keep looking through the stupid menu and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, you can always, like I said, type it into a terminal.
and ZenMap is the uh, graphical interface for uh, NMAP. Uh, ZenMap is, and you can type in your target here. You can do an intense scan, intense scan plus UDP, so on and so forth. Um, you can, you know, change your profile stuff here. And this is not as intense as um, using the regular command line version. Um, of nmap but I, I mean honestly guys you could do this just you know for quick look up stuff like that but you can see that in armitage this is this is kind of built in too um, but there may be some advanced stuff that you want to do a scan to you know you may want to um, you know scan like uh, sin uh, stealth scan or something like that you may not want to use ICMP because maybe they're blocking it you know I mean there's there's a ton of stuff you could do uh, in there as well but uh, if you want to use nmap you can always type, oops, I spelled it wrong, how about that? You can always type nmap, and then you're going to get a list of all the commands. So you can see by just scrolling through some of the stuff here, I mean, you have a lot of flags that you can set, um, you know, to do some advanced firewall invasion and uh, service discoveries and stuff like that. I mean, you know, but this is a lot of stuff to remember, guys, so feel free to... Uh, you know, mess around with that if you want. You can go over to nmap.org, and I'm sure they have quite a few tutorials on in here, but it's pretty much the help file of it. Um, you can also see the man page, obviously, as you can see here, at the nmap.org um, book man.html for more information and examples. You know, and if you, if you open that link, um, let's see, I'm just going to copy the link address. We'll go into our Ice Weasel browser. And we just pop that link in, and it's nmap.org. So obviously, you know, you can go through here and you can read everything there is to know about that. The beautiful thing too about, and I know I've, I've at least mentioned it in one other video, the beautiful thing about using Linux over Windows to do auditing is things like you can see right here, firewall, IDS, evasion, and spoofing. Now you can spoof your source IP without even using a proxy, guys. I mean, that's pretty crazy, right? So you know, if you were up against a firewall that's blocking all requests except for something that's on that same subnet or that same IP address, and a lot of administrators, believe it or not, they do not set a rule in the firewall, or maybe they're not allowed to or have the option to, they do not set a rule in the firewall to not accept scan type connections from internal hosts like 192.168.1.2 uh, or their own physical uh, WAN based interface. You know, if their WAN based interface was 172.205.24.36 or something, you know, you could spoof your address as that, and 9 out of 10 times, the firewall is not going to block you. So there's a lot of stuff you can do there. Um, you can use uh, proxy chains with Tor. I might make a video on setting up Tor with proxy chains. Uh, so you can use proxies to do your scans. Uh, you know, um, in fact, Armitage in here. You can use a SOX proxy, and you could set that up here if you had it. Now, the beautiful thing about Tor is it listens on 127.0.0.1, and if it's a SOX proxy, bingo, you just type in localhost right here. You would type that in, and you would type in the port that it's listening on for the SOX war, uh, connection proxy, and you can do show advanced options, which is not too much, but um, and then you can launch that. Now, you can also launch... Um, proxy chains uh, with that in mind uh, so you do pro I believe the command is proxy chains and then the application that you actually want to run uh, so you wouldn't even have to manually set it up in every single application that you wanted to use um, so I'm going to toy around with a little bit with that and I'll probably just make a video on it just to make a video on it so you guys have it at your disposal if you needed to use that but you know nine out of ten times do you really have to spoof your IP address if you're doing this legally no um, you know, do you have to hide behind a proxy? No. But, uh, you know, you may, like I said, have firewall evasion techniques, you know, where you have to spoof the source address uh, correctly in order to actually get responses back from the router or the firewall. So that, you know, and stuff like Nmap, like we just said, uh, you know, has that availability. You know, like I said, you don't really need to use proxies, guys. Proxies tend to be slow, unreliable, I mean, but if you were so inclined, uh, knock yourself out you can do it I'll make a video on it okay guys that's gonna pretty much do it for this one here uh, I do wanna get started on the other video so um, 
thanks for watching. Uh, I'll put all the links in the description for things that we talked about throughout the video. Uh, also, please continue to keep liking and subscribing to our channel. Uh, spread the word to your friends. Share it. Uh, check us out on Facebook. Um, check out the blog for regular updates every day. Uh, I probably post to the blog more than I should. Um, a little addicted to that, but I want to keep you guys informed and up to date on what's going on. We also have the security vulnerabilities feed. Um, two of them up there from Security Focus and the other one from uh, NIST.gov. Uh, um, so we have those going. Um, I've been really impressed with the amount of interest that we're generating in our videos. Um, I've been really impressed with all the feedback that I've been getting. Thanks for that, guys. You guys are doing an awesome job. Um, you know, like I said, uh, like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Okay. Thanks, guys. I'll see you in the next video.